Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gimba Red, and today we're going to go over a recent study on full body red light therapy. Now it was published in January 31st, 2024, and it goes through a triple blinded study with 44 patients, uh, half of it which were treated and half of which were in the placebo group. And we're going to walk through a lot of principles of how to properly dose red light therapy and talk about the biphasic dose response, the cumulative dose response, how to think about long-term dosing. But I think it's very important to start with an actual whole body red light therapy study. So that way we're kind of comparing apples to apples to LED therapy to LED therapy, where a lot of companies and a lot of brands and influencers will reference laser studies to try to justify their LED parameters. And it just doesn't make sense. It's comparing apples to oranges. So let's go over the parameters of this study. It's free to read, so you can look it up yourself. Uh, but it uses 660 red and 850 near-infrared. The irradiance is 28 milliwatts per centimeter squared. You can see in the table it's watts per centimeter squared, so you have to multiply by 1,000 to get milliwatts. Now, my first problem with this study is that their dosing math doesn't add up, that if you multiply 28 milliwatts per centimeter squared times 1,200 seconds, I get 33 0.6 joules per centimeter squared. So I'm not sure what I'm missing, why they would report 25.2, and the math really clearly shows, I've tried to double check it a bunch of different ways, and it's always 33.6. But either way, this dose seems pretty reasonable, 25 or 33 joules per centimeter squared for a whole body treatment. And again, remember, it's not a targeted laser with a lot of skin contact compression, so it's more of a systemic treatment, so maybe you need a little bit more energy to overcome the reflection losses and overcome the lack of penetration. But I think the exposure time and the low intensity are also important for the systemic effects of full body red light therapy, that we need to recognize it. It's not a direct treatment that you might use lower doses. It's more of a systemic treatment that you need longer exposure times. So regardless, if it's 25 or 33 joules per centimeter squared, you know, that might be an effective range that the study got good results with this dose. So the question would be, should we increase the dose? Would we get a better response if we do more, if we do 40 or 50 joules per centimeter squared? Or should we decrease the dose? You know, it depends on how your body responds to red light therapy. But we know in general, a lot of studies have referenced this biphasic dose response, this hormetic upside down U curve, that if you get too much of any pharmaceutical, any therapy, too much water, too much oxygen, it ends up being a bad thing. One quote in a paper by Dr. Hamblin is very nice, so I'll read that to you. The biphasic dose response describes a situation in which there is an optimum value of the dose of PBM most often defined as the energy density joules per centimeter squared. It has been consistently found that when the dose of PBM is increased, a maximum response is reached at some value. And if the dose is increased beyond that maximal value, the response diminishes, disappears, and it is even possible that negative or inhibitory effects are produced at very high fluences. So we know if the, the study decided to use 25 or 33 joules per centimeter squared, you know, maybe we can do a plus or minus a little bit around that range, but that seems to be a good dose that has been proven to be effective. So we don't want to kind of extrapolate on our own unless we know what we're doing. And I love the way that Dr. Hamlin wrote this, that he wrote dose in quotes, and he says that it's most often defined as energy density, which is an important point for my next slide. So we talked about getting the dose in the right range, but what about the intensity? What if we want to speed it up? We don't want to spend 20 minutes doing full body. We won't only want to spend 10 minutes. Well, if we follow the law of reciprocity, that as long as you get the same amount of energy, if you double the intensity, you could cut the time in half. So the math is very straightforward. If we want to double the intensity, we get 56 milliwatts per centimeter squared, and then we can cut the time in half and we get the same energy density. However, and this is a big however, and a lot of people are conveniently kind of missing out on this, especially brands selling you high intensity products, and they just say, oh, we're saving you a lot of time, you're welcome, but you might not get the same therapeutic response. So you can deliver the same amount of energy, but if you do it too fast, you might get a different response. So this concept has been very well established in a lot of review articles, especially dating back to this biphasic dose response article in 2009, that your real dose is your intensity and your exposure time. It's not just looking at the energy density that you can take some sort of shortcut and speed up your dose.
So you can see here in this quote, they explain the law of reciprocity, that your energy is your power times your time, but they clearly say there's not necessarily reciprocity that can be applied to red light therapy. The law of reciprocity seems to work well if we have some chemicals in a beaker and we need light to activate them, then that applies because it's a very simple situation. But for human biology and uh, cell biology, it gets much more complicated. And so that hypothetical situation that I said, that doubling the intensity could cut your time in half, they clearly say that it doesn't work that way. If the power is doubled and the time is half, then the same energy is delivered, but a different biological response is often reserved. And so they're very clear about this point. It might be better, it might be worse. We don't know until we actually test it. So if we want to get the consistent results, then we want to mimic the studies as close as possible. And we don't want to extrapolate that higher intensities would be faster or better, or you need deeper penetration or whatever it is that you need the right amount of dose and delivered in the right amount of time delivered by the right amount of intensity. So the true dose that most researchers say is to get the right intensity and more importantly the exposure time. Okay we talked about energy density, we talked about power density, but let's talk about how often to do red light therapy. Should we do this dose of 25 or 33 once a day, every day? Is that our daily dose? Well, there's an important concept called the cumulative dose response. And here's one quote from an article that's very good. The dose from one treatment lasts some time and what remains of the dose is added to the dose of the next treatment. Adequate time between doses is essential to allow the cells time to respond to the initial dose and also to avoid a situation where the accumulated dose eventually ends up above the biostimulating range or even in the inhibitory range with consequently poorer results. So if we look at this graph, a lot of the cellular effects we know happen after a red light therapy session has ended. Some of the studies say between three to six hours, you actually get a peak of ATP response and some of those molecular effects. But then it kind of drops back down. But if you do a repeated kind of daily dose, you could be starting at an elevated level. Now, this might be a good thing because if you take your time and do low doses and you gradually build up, that's why there's kind of a delayed effect that sometimes it takes a few doses or might take a few weeks for you to start to really feel the benefits of red light therapy. But we can see if we keep going at that pace and we keep stacking on these effects, you could actually reach an inhibitory region similar to the biphasic dose response of a single dose. Now we know we keep, if we keep stacking the doses, then you also get an inhibitory response. And I think the opposite is happening too. That if you start out with high doses, your first couple of weeks or months could be great. They might be miraculous. But over time, you might notice the benefits are tapering off. Maybe they're diminishing. Maybe they're even getting worse. And what's your natural instinct when that starts to happen? You might actually try to increase your dose to offset it. When in reality, and what the science shows is that you should be decreasing your dose to maintain those benefits. And that could be done by reducing the frequency or reducing the dose. So another article that became viral recently is the effect on blood glucose that they treated people 45 minutes before taking blood glucose and they found a, a reduced level of the blood sugar response in the body. And this was a human study. But it's remarkable that they say a single exposure can have an effect three hours later and can have an impact for five to seven days. And the timing of how they did this, they did the red light therapy 45 minutes before taking the glucose so they would allow the cellular effects to build up. So back to our full body study, they did doses three times per week. So that's a very important detail that wasn't in that initial table. You have to read the article, but doing it three times a week is very important that they didn't do it daily. They didn't do it every day. So if this study did it three times a week, uh, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it might not be better to do it every day. So we might not want to do this dose of 25 or 33 joules per centimeter squared every single day. Cause again, we've got the cumulative dose response. And I think this is a big problem when people are looking at short-term studies or studies that are clinical grade and they think they need to do that dose every day with their at-home device. So one of the things I think about is what's the weekly dose. So in this study, the weekly dose was 75 or 99 joules per centimeter squared, and maybe we can chop that up however we want. So if we want to do it every day of the week, we enjoy doing red light therapy every morning. We like how it sets our circadian rhythm and all these other benefits. We want to cut that dose very much down so that way it adds up to that weekly dose. So maybe we only do 14 joules per centimeter squared each day so that we, we don't overdose on the cumulative response. Or we could do a lower dose, like 20 joules per centimeter squared five times a week. 
and an interesting question would be, could we do 100 joules per centimeter squared once a week? Which the answer seems to be probably not because we don't want that inhibitory dose in a single dose. So it seems to be a preference to do lower doses, but just do them at a routine kind of, you know, three to five times a week. Now, this is another study that really brings together a lot of these dosing concepts, especially when it comes to cumulative dosing and biphasic dosing, that when they treated rats with TBI, they found that three consecutive treatments, so three days in a row, worked better than doing it 14 days in a row. And they decided if they wanted to do more frequent dosing for a longer period of time to cut the dose in half. And the other thing is what I talked about was the way they cut the dose in half was they also cut the intensity in half because they wanted to keep the exposure time the same because they find the exposure time is very important. So for me, this really brings up another point of not just kind of the cumulative dose response, but how long are you doing it? Are you doing red light therapy every day for months and years, like a home use device? And that might be kind of a risky idea to use therapeutic dosing for a very long period of time. So if we go back to this fibromyalgia study, they only did for four weeks a total of 12 sessions. And they found with follow-ups two weeks, three months, and six months later that they still had some benefits. So most red light therapy studies are done within a limited time frame. So if we want to expand our time frame for how long we're going to do these doses, again that might be another reason to reduce the dose and reduce the intensity. Then it might not make sense to use a 12 dose study to tell us how to do red light therapy for years. And so that's what I get kind of concerned about is that if people have a chronic illness like fibromyalgia and we're using that dosing to tell relatively healthy people how to dose red light therapy, then that could be problematic. Like for me, if I don't have any major health issues and I'm doing red light therapy dosing, then I wouldn't use a therapeutic dose that was used on people that are chronically ill. So maybe for chronic illness, a weekly dose of 100 joules per centimeter squared is good, but for a relatively healthy person like myself, maybe I'll cut that in half. Maybe I'll cut that down by a quarter because I don't want my healthy cells to get overdose because we, you can get that inhibition on healthy cells. The reason why you might do higher doses for unhealthy cells is to bring them back to normal to initiate that healing response. And so that's it. Hopefully this study helped kind of review some of the important parameters of dosing and how we can think about it for applying it to our own health. The study used both red and near-infrared light, 660 and 850. They used 28 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And again, I haven't seen any other studies on whole body red light therapy that use anything higher than 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So it'd be reckless to assume that higher intensities are better or faster if we don't have the studies to really show that. And they do 20 minute exposure time, which seems kind of long, but you know, it's nice and it's therapeutic. And even the placebo group found some benefits just from laying inside the bed without any lights on. And for me, you know, appreciating red light therapy, these full body panels are more of a systemic therapy. Then we need that adequate exposure time to get that systemic response. And the joules per centimeter squared were 25 to 33, whatever the, the math works out to be, I don't know. But very important, it was only three times a week for four weeks. So it was a limited trial, and that's what a lot of people are looking at. Some trials are even shorter. They're only a couple of doses, a couple of sessions, and we're using that short-term therapeutic dosing to tell us how to use full body panels for years. You know, it doesn't make sense. But we talked about the biphasic dose response for joules per centimeter squared. We don't necessarily want a higher or lower, uh, but you want to be empowered to be able to try it out and also think of the counterintuitive nature that trying lower doses, trying lower intensities, trying less frequent doses could get you better results. So it's very counterintuitive sometimes that less is more. And I would want to think more about what's our maintenance dosing, our general wellness dosing. If you don't have any major health issues, but you're using red light therapy, especially full body red light therapy, engulfing all your healthy cells with these relatively high intensities and high doses, that maybe we want to tune that down, again, just for supporting our general health, supporting our stress levels, and supporting our daily needs, but not really getting to that therapeutic dose that's used for sick people. And so that's my summary of the study and, and getting a feel for all these different dosing concepts so that way you can optimize it and be empowered and do the right things and try to get the best results. Thanks for tuning in.